the Pacific Ocean, north of Australia, just below the equator, lies the island of New Ireland. This is one of the many islands that make up the independent nation of Papua New Guinea. Until the last century, New Ireland has been geographically isolated from much of the world, but it is now part of the global economy. bicycles and plastic baskets are just a few of the signs of rapid social and economic changes that contact with the outside world has brought to this island. Yet many people still follow their accustomed way of life and are making an effort to revive and maintain some of the older and more traditional values. In 1979, filmmaker Chris Owen was allowed to record a revival of the Malagan ceremonial cycle one of the most important events in village life. This Malagan took place in Padatkin village. It was organized by three relatives of the deceased clansman Book Book. It took place 14 years after Book Book's death in recognition of his important contributions to the clan. <laughs> Here, toward the end of the Malagan ceremonies, one of the relatives who organized it, Anton Kaparal, gives a speech honoring Book Book's accomplishments while standing upon a pile of freshly slaughtered pigs. All right. Papa, you play in the same way. My friends are welcome, you call big man all in the half. Look up, look here. Central to the whole purpose of the Malagan is the reintegration of the spiritual, social, and economic ties that bind the community together. One of the most important elements of the Malagan that makes this possible is the carving and eventual display of the elaborately painted wooden pole figures and masks. The process of making these works of art, which are also called malaguns, begins with the cutting down of trees and covering them with leaves to protect them from the eyes of women as they are transported into a special enclosure surrounding the men's house. It is here that another of the brothers organizing the Malagan, Eliakam Kaparal, will begin his work. He is one of the few village men able to carve the intricate patterns of the Malagans, having learned the skill from Book Book, his deceased clan brother. Eli 
Occam's brother Raymond explains the origin of this malagan, which is named Lobotoma. Eliakim and his brothers have acquired the right to carve several patterns of figures and masks. These carving rights, bought or received as gifts, will ultimately be sold or passed on to relatives and descendants. The health of Eliakim's brother Anton was affected by the spiritual force of the Malagan contained in the almost finished Labimus carvings. In addition to his role as carver, Eliakim also exerts control over the Wanis, masked representations of bush spirits. Transformed into roving bands of aggressive Wanis, the men of Eliakim's hamlet run to neighboring villages, inviting other villagers to join the Malagan ceremonies as masked dancers in the final Malagan event, which will take place five months hence. The Wanis leave payment for the dancers in the form of shell money. The sudden appearance of Wanis in the village informs everyone of the secret Malagan preparations going on behind the men's fence. To the villagers, these Wanis represent aspects of the spiritual forces that affect their lives and well-being. The ability of certain men to exert authority over the Wanis strengthens their sense of control and social interdependence. for the huge number of villagers and neighbors expected for the final performances. Valuable pigs are selected and fattened for slaughter. On the last day of the Maldagan, the pigs are killed and carried to the village to be butchered and distributed.
The traditional staple food, taro root, is grown in special garden plots, also in preparation for the feast. Planted, harvested, and cooked primarily by women, the taro represents a great investment of time and labor. The quantities of taro are gathered and displayed as proof of the productivity and well-being of the clan. For this Malagan, so much taro was needed that other villages nearby were contracted to supply additional taro. begins with the destruction of the enclosing fence by the Wanis. Revealing to the audience all of the Malagans carved in memory of the deceased man Book Book and those remembered with him. Grouped together under a thatched roof, the Malagan display is a tangible representation of the strength of the inter-clan relations and an embodiment of social bonds that exist within the group and make possible the enormous cooperative endeavor of the Malagan. They evoke the last formal display of grief for the dead. The events of the Malagan culminate in performances of elaborately choreographed and rehearsed dances. Identically dressed and wearing large Tatanua masks, these performers dance in unison. Their carefully rehearsed movements imitate those of birds, and the orderly structure of the dance suggests the harmony the Malagan achieves. After the dances, there is a vast exchange of gifts of money and food, most importantly, meat. Here Anton delivers Book Book's final eulogy from atop the pile of pigs. Later, the carcasses will be butchered and distributed to repay existing debts or initiate new obligations for repayment in the future. At the 
next such ceremony, these obligations may be met and the cycle of exchanges continues. Beyond its immediate purpose of memorializing the deceased, the Malagan ceremony is a powerful force for the maintenance of social networks and clan solidarity. In the present time of rapid social and economic change in New Ireland, Malagans continue to be a link to the past.